in high definition. It's great to have you with us on this Monday. I'm Tim McGonigal. And I'm Shannon Newth. First in the courtroom, a woman reports waking up to a man on top of her after a party. Kane Beavers made his initial appearance in Cascade County Court this afternoon, facing one count of sexual intercourse without consent. According to court documents, the victim says she was at a party last week when she decided to go sleep in a camper on the property. Court documents state the victim asked Beavers to cuddle with her, and when she woke up, Beavers was on top of her, and she yelled at him to stop and get off of her. She was able to get away from Beavers and left the scene with a friend. Court documents state Beavers admitted to Cascade County Sheriff's deputies that the victim was highly intoxicated at the time of the incident. A popular glacier campground was temporarily evacuated over the weekend after a man fired off a gun inside of his tent. Glacier National Park says a 28 year old Helena man was taken into custody after his girlfriend says he fired a shot through the ceiling of their tent at the Sprague Creek campground. The suspect was reportedly acting erratic before firing his weapon. Law enforcement responded around 930 Saturday night, but the suspect had already left to the shore of Lake McDonald. That's when police evacuated the campground. They were able to negotiate with the man, take his weapon and then arrest him. It was a textbook handling of an active shooter situation. Our rangers are trained in um, mental health um, incidents as well as in active shooter incidents and handled it perfectly. Stegerwald says it's legal to carry a firearm inside Glacier National Park. However, you are not allowed to discharge it and police continue to investigate the incident. Great Falls residents have an opportunity to learn more about the activity and prevalence of gangs this week. Neighborhood Council 6 will host the presentation Gangs of Great Falls this Wednesday at their meeting. The guest speaker is Great Falls Police Department Sergeant Jeff Beecroft. The presentation starts at 7 in the evening at Sunnyside Elementary School's gym. This event also provides information and recruitment opportunities for the Neighborhood Watch program, which aims to lower crime and make neighborhoods more safe. There's a new video game that's getting people to go outside and play. This phone app called Pokemon Go launched last week in the United States. It's now on top of the charts for both the iPhone App Store and on Google Play. This game is a lot like geocaching. It uses GPS to identify a player's location and requires the user to travel around town to collect Pokemon. But with more people out and about playing this game, the Great Falls Police Department has some words of caution to players hoping to catch all of them. They ask people to be aware of their surroundings so they're not walking into traffic to avoid going onto private property and keep playing time off of the roadways. You can't use your phone while you're driving, regardless of what you're doing, especially not playing a game doing it. Because, um, I mean, you're, you're not only putting yourself in danger, but you're putting everyone else in danger around you. Officer Meek says if there's a Pokemon on private property, to ask for the property owner's permission first. We'll have more on this at 10. Well, it's been an incredible few days of wacky weather in Big Sky Country. On the left, you're looking at video of that tornado that formed west of Dillon on Sunday. And on the right, this was the scene this morning as summer snow fell on the mountains of Montana. And Big Sky Resort is normally known for outdoor fun and activities during the summer like cycling and hiking. But those activities were put on pause today. Snow fell on the mountain resort early this morning and our cameras were there. A couple from California visiting say they weren't disappointed. Beautiful, so quiet and peaceful and Amazing. We had heard that there was going to snow today, so I had to peek out the window, and sure enough, it was snowing. Well, our Storm Tracker weather team has been on top of all of this wacky weather since last week. Meteorologist Mike Rollins is here now. Mike, on top of all of it, some very impressive rain totals. Absolutely. Over the last three days, we've really been adding up the rain here under the big sky. Zortman, the BLM site there in northeast Montana, almost three inches of rain since Saturday, two and a half inches or near that in the Ross site in the Little Belt Mountains there uh, south of Great Falls, Lewistown over two inches, Great Falls an under an inch and Helena picking up about a half inch of rain. You can see we still have showers and thunderstorms making their way through the northeastern corner of the state. They're moving uh, toward the south and east, spinning around low pressure that just moved north of the border about a couple hours ago. Here in Great Falls, we're dry. 66 our temperature right now. Winds out of the west at 10 to 15. It is breezy out there. It doesn't really feel like summer. It'll be breezy and cool this evening. 65 at 7, 64 degrees at 9 o'clock as our sun 
sunsets at 921 and starry skies take us into the overnight hours. It's cool overnight. Temperatures gradually warming up in the next couple of days. We'll go hour by hour through the forecast for a look at when the showers and storms finally move out in storm tracker weather. Thanks, Mike. We'll see you then. Fort Harrison's VA clinic has expanded by more than 5,800 square feet to help veterans get the care they need faster. More than 8,000 men and women use the current facility, and half of those patients will use the new clinic. It will provide 11 additional exam rooms and one procedure room. The new clinic will use the patient-aligned care team model known as PACT, which is comprised of a doctor, nurse, practitioner, registered nurse, and medical clerk. Four PAC teams will move into the expanded building. Chief Nursing Executive Norlin Nelson says uh, hopes the new space will provide Im will improve efficiency, wait time, and better accessibility to the women and the disabled. We should be able to get patients back into the their exam room. They should be able to be seen quicker and then get out the door to improve our access. Parking has also expanded with 22 more regular spots and five more handicap accessible spots. The new clinic will start seeing patients in two weeks. Youth in crisis now have a place to call home in Cascade County. The Center for Mental Health has opened the doors to the Youth Crisis Center at 626 Central Avenue West. The organization held a ribbon cutting and housewarming back in May, but today they began to offer special services to youth in our community. The center has a mobile crisis team, mental health crisis case management, and short-term residential crisis stabilization services. The Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services awarded the center $200 thousand dollars for development of the facility.